So speaking of the beers we have right now, could you just tell me about, we've got the Sang Noir and it's the Nouveau that this we have. This is the Noyo. Noyo. So right. Noyo is, and this is a really fun one to talk about because not many people know what the Noyo nut is. It's, it's a, we get this from the apricot, which we do a lot of apricots, obviously. And all of our beers are made with fresh fruit. So when we're doing, when it's apricot season, which we had six weeks ago, our guys were working hard in the blending house, literally tearing apart these apricots, pulling out the pit, putting the fresh fruit into uh, an area that we then put into barrels. But then we saved the nut. We saved the Noyo pit, which most people would generally discard. We dry that out for six months, and then we crush it. And inside of a, the apricot pit is a small little almond. Yep, looks like an almond. And that almond is what is used to make amaretto. Uh, it's also what is used to make cyanide. But we don't tell the cyanide yeah. as much. Um, but it's it's a very nutty, robust flavor. And so this is going into um, some sour blonde ales that we age in white wine barrels uh, for up to 24 months. So this one is a very aged beer for us, as far as a, the higher realm of, of length of time in a barrel. So we'll add in the Noyo nut, and then we put in fresh red raspberries as well, too. Um, and generally, we'll add fruits about halfway through the aging process, some a little bit later. So for the creek and cranberry and blueberry and stuff like that, it's about six to eight months aging in a barrel. Then we'll add fruit, and we age another six to eight months after that. And again, you're using fresh fruit or fresh purees. You're not using no purees. extracts. No, no purees. purees. All fresh fruit. So apricots, cherries, blueberries. Uh, we just had a bunch of peaches come in. We did one called a pluot, which is yeah. a really cool, cool fruit. It's got the most bitter, sour outside, but really sweet, fleshy inside. Um, and so everything is coming, comes very close to us. Um, the apricots and, and nectarines and peaches come from central Washington. Our blueberries come from, uh, from right outside of Eugene, about two hours south of Portland. Our cherries come from the Willamette Valley. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's all, it's the Willamette Valley and also the, um, uh, the Columbia River Gorge area. Wow, so but, we, yeah, like, very, very They're cool. all, and, and Ron Gansberg and, and Kevin Martin, our lead blender, and some of our, our brewers, they will go out to the fields, and they will talk with the farmers, and they'll say, is it ready? And, and these are farmers that we've had relationships with for many years. And so we, we know, they know that we want the fruit when it's at its ripest. Yeah. Uh, and if it's not up to par, then we won't use it. So blueberry. We usually do our bigger batches, blueberry, creek, apricot. We do in about a 180 barrel batch. So that's 10 brews to fill that up. Wow. <laughs> but we'll do 180 yeah. barrels. And to do that, we needed X amount of blueberries. So somewhere 15 to 18,000 pounds. When we got to the fields, the farmer said, I've got about three quarters of what you're looking for. I have another quarter of blueberries. You tell me if they're up to par. They looked at them, they tasted them, they weren't what we want. So instead of a 180 barrel batch of blueberry this year, we're having 140 because we didn't have the right fruit to make what we wanted. Wow. And that's really staying true to our character of making sure that there's only the best ingredients. Wow, I mean, that's uh, commendable. I think a lot of people would just, all right, we're making this much, now figure out how to do it. And we work backwards from there. Right, and, and, we, and, and you'll see it's a really fun time of the year in June through the middle of August is our fruiting season. Bring in extra temporary labor that are coming in, and literally when the apricots come in, we put them on, we'll get thousands of pounds, we put them on these shelves in a warehouse, because most of the stuff is picked for the, for the grocery stores. Yeah. You know, so obviously, Grocery stores, it goes from it goes from the farmer to a warehouse and to a grocery store, and then maybe two weeks later it goes out. To the so we actually take and put all of our fruit on these long shelves with fans that are constantly circulating the air. And every day, guys are going in and feeling them with gloves, <laughs> feeling to make sure that they're right. And we'll pull off, and it's about a week and a half process from when they start to when we end to make sure we pick the fruit at its peak of ripeness. Now, with all this emphasis on using fresh fruit, how do you make sure, I'm going back to this kind of clean, sour brewery that you have, how do you make sure that you're not getting 
native yeasts on all this fruit skin, which is where yeast naturally Great question. Live. And, and that's what makes us a Northwest and South. So when we, when Cassia first started coming out, people was like, oh, you're going to do like the Belgian South. Yeah. Yes, but at the same time, we want, we want to pay homage to what they created hundreds and hundreds of years ago, but we don't want to copy them. So their yeast that they use in Belgium, the Netherlands, is very, it's in the air. Yeah. It's their terroir. Yeah. You know, that's what makes their beers. And that's the same with ours. The molds and the, and, and the spores that are on our fruits in the Northwest creates our distinct flavor that you may not get. You can take the same recipe and make it in Michigan or New England, you may not get the same taste because it doesn't have that same terroir that we have in the Northwest. Okay, so then there, there are other, I guess, you're, you're not sterilizing the fruit or anything like that. No, I actually had, I, I posted some pictures, or I had our PR person post some pictures when we were doing the blueberry fruiting. So when we call that, this, we bring in big flats of blueberries that'll go on a big, long table. Guys by hand, spraying it down with a hose, pulling out leaves and stems and the, the bad blueberries and then, then it goes off to a crusher and I send a picture of that and they put on social media. Somebody said, oh great, it's like, how are you sterilizing those berries? Well, not. I mean, that's what makes the beer what it is. Okay. That's so what then, I mean, in addition to whatever yeast you guys are brewing with and the lactobacillus you're pitching with, I mean, there's, there is other stuff out there Absolutely. that makes it kind of... Okay. Right. Got it. So it's not really a clean sour brewery at all then. Okay. I, is there one? Is there a, I, don't I don't know. I there, thought you were the one, but I yeah. guess not. Yeah. But I mean, we're as close. I, mean, I think we're all, if we're not in the cool ship or it's all closed fermentation, right. we're all kind of in that same boat. Um, but yeah, we don't want to use purees because we want to be able to use, again, fresh ingredients. That's, ours are a little bit more expensive than yeah. the other ones. Uh, and not to say that the people that are using purees are doing it wrong. There are some phenomenal, phenomenal beers out there using other products. We choose to do it this way. And that's just how we're going to continue to do it. Um, but. Well, let me know about this next beer here. This is one of my personal favorites from Cascade. I absolutely love this beer. Can so, you talk a little bit about this? So this is a, it's a bigger red. So it's a red, so we do reds, blondes, wheats, uh, those are most of the brands. And then we're going to age this in bourbon barrels. So primarily most of our beers are aged in wine barrels because uh, we were able to use wine barrels, so we're using red wine and white wine barrels. But this one is in bourbon. We only use bourbon barrels once okay. uh, because we feel like if we pull everything out of it that we, that we can, because the bourbon barrels will give it a really unique bourbon-esque characteristic. After a year on the bourbon barrel, you've really pulled all that out. And we've actually looked at the stays and see how far the penetration is yeah. into that stave. And it's a good two thirds of the way through. So you're really not going to, and that's when the, the big scotch manufacturers, right. they'll get to about two thirds of the way through the stave and then they're done with that. Yeah. Um, but then we'll age it in the bourbon bar 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 barrels and then we'll add fresh uh, bing cherries to it. So we were making this, so the next year's version, so we were doing Creek. At the same time, we were taking and hand scooping in about 150 pounds per oak barrel of fresh crushed bean cherries that were then beer was added back into and then laid the rest for another six to eight months. So how long total in the bourbon barrel for this beer? It's going to be upwards of 16 months. So, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you definitely get some of the, the character of the spirit and certainly the cherry as well, but you, you do get some of the actual wood. There is this char ash hint to it as well, which is always what made it so interesting to me that it, it wasn't just the flavor of the actual bourbon and the fruit, there was also this kind of, the barrel character was there as well. And the barrel character is so important, and so we have another one, uh, by the way, the Saint Noir for 2000, this year's release will be coming out uh, in about another, it's coming out next Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other one's Saint Royal. Yeah. which is one that we've got that's aged in port barrels and pinot barrels. These port barrels that we got 
and this is a, this is his exact description. Ron Gasper, our head brewer, said he goes, when these barrels came in, they were still sloshing. So there was still a little port in there. And somebody asked him, like, well, should we clean them out? And he's just like, hell no, get no, beer on yeah. there, quick, get yeah. the beer in there. And I, I tasted the, the same round before it got blended. And the Pinot, again, it's still at this point, it's non-carbonated, it's, it's still flat beer. It's, it's soured at that point, though. But I held that up to my nose, and I, I had been blindfolded. I would have thought I was drinking a nice Oregon Pinot Noir. Wow. Um, and then it, get, it gets mixed with the, or blended with the, with the port barrel, um, sours, and creates, again, I think Singer Isle is one of my favorites. Uh, but I so there I don't really have one that's not a favorite. Yeah, no, I mean they're all they're all pretty great. Uh, I wanted to thank you for sitting down, and I want to also thank I forgot to mention earlier, Link's Tap Room for letting us kind of crash the party a little bit and uh, sit down and and talk about the beers you guys are doing. They're Cascade. they're a great partner. Uh, I think we had kind of uh, nine Cascade bottles in their cooler, so. Um, Cole's been a great supporter of ours as well, and so uh, come on out to, to Links and uh, try some Cascade. But hey, Cole, how many how many you got on draft? Thirty six handles plus three uh, cask engine lines. Thirty six handles and three cask lines. Thirty six and three. And then Joker in Chicago. Another sixty ish uh, bottles and cans in our cooler. We're giving you uh, yeah. We, we appreciate the support from Lakes. Thank you. No I think they're they're fans of I think Portland in general. They've got that kind of Portland. I don't know. I call it the Portland beer menu too. That electronic thing you see all over the place in Portland. And I think that was I think the digital pour was uh, started in Portland. Yeah, I think. I mean, I see it all over the place. Yeah. There. Anyway, we're digressing. Uh, thanks so much and, and good luck with everything and keep making the beers at uh, Cascade. Thank well, thank you, you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks, guys, for watching. Until next time, we've got some great sour beers and drinks from Cascade, and hopefully, you can do it. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Cool. Thank Thanks, you very man. much. Appreciate it.